Uh, call the meeting to order at 6.03. And I have approved, review and approved minutes from January 17th. Any discussion? Fine to me. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alrighty. On to financial statements. You have a set of warrants that are going around for $67,453.05. Um, combination of payroll, general fund expenditures, after school program, uh, REAP grant, uh, revolving accounts, and school lunch. So that's what's coming around the table. Mm -hmm. um, expenditure results for February. I did a fair amount of cleanup of um, lines for you. Um, so I'll walk you through some of the things that I've done. This um, so the biggest changes in um, the uh, expenditure report right now it sort of starts on the bottom of page two and goes through to the top of page um, three. Um, and if you notice in particular at the very bottom of page two where we start in, where the, the four digit number is 2310, um, that's a function that's for teacher specialists. Um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has asked that we no longer use that function code for regular salaries, that it only be used for um, stipends, and so they have asked us to enact that as of this year. So the teacher specialist has been included in the function above 2305 in the classroom teacher line, and the salaries for special education teachers, I actually created a new line within that 2305 function in order to make that happen. So um, that's a, a big change uh, in terms of where uh, numbers are so that you know, understand that. Um, we had some long-term subs. That was a, a pretty big deficit line. So we um, took some, uh, there was some savings in the regular salary and a couple of other places that we used to make that line whole. So that is no longer in deficit. And that long-term sub position has ended. So uh, we're pretty much in a good place. Uh, the one place that I need to um, do some checking on still and yet uh, is in the area of regular substitutes because the general substitutes, as you can see, see are still carrying a deficit. And I haven't gotten to the bottom of that one yet, but um, that's on the to-do list to do. Other than that, I think all of the lines were pretty much brought into line um, so that you're not running other than a couple of... Um, small things that we still need to clean up, but I mean, there are no big glaring deficits other than that one place and uh, substitutes that we need to work on. Uh, so uh, we did try to do, um, you know, the clean up for you so that uh, things uh, look that way. I think one of the things that we'll be um, looking at as we go into the next meeting is doing some uh, projections out because uh, the, because the town pays for salaries, there's no way for us to encumber them within the financial accounting software. I can force that to happen. So, you know, I want to do some encumbrances out, um, you know, so that you are, are well aware of where you stand. So that's uh, on the, on the to-do list for the next meeting. But the subs are only off by a couple hundred dollars, right? Um, overall, yes, because as you see, the line below the special education subs is $3,200 to the good and a piece of me wonders if people are just being miscoded. So yeah, okay. uh, that's uh, what we'll work on. Yep. I'm betting you're right. Any questions? And at this point in the year, we're more than halfway through, right? Yes. So yeah, so that's why I want to do those salary incumbences right. out so that you have a real clear picture of where you stand going into the last quarter of the year. Right. What's the behavioral intervention expense? It looks like it not where go to the for page seven. Okay. That's in a revolving account. 
This is your school choice account. Okay. Um, and when we get into a discussion of the FY20 budget, your school choice account is actually in a very good place. So I'll walk you If you want to know what it is, I think Kristen can probably explain to you. I, I can answer that for you, but it's, I think we had a kiddo where we brought in a, we had a student that needed some ABA. Yes, do you remember um, last year we talked to you about the young uh, student that we were um, possibly going to need a different placement for or bring in some um, significant um, expertise? Do you remember we had talked about that at the last meeting? That's what we that. Can Every young student. We were able to keep yeah. the student mm -hmm. in um, in district mm -hmm. doing phenomenal, but right. it, we had to add some services, so that's what that's about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheaper than sending yeah. them out. Less sure. expensive than they elsewhere. Get what they need. And yeah. so much better for the yeah. Yeah. stay in their homes. Great. Mm -hmm. All righty. Oh, and you guys are signing the warrants. Mm -hmm. uh, public comment. We're not Make getting a budget. Comment. We're not getting a preliminary it's budget. Mm -hmm. ah. It's coming. Oh, that's next further thing, down. Next, next further thing on down. the budget is okay. right after public after comment. After public comment, okay. jumping the gun there. Oh, sorry. Very excited. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we appreciate your enthusiasm. Oh, thank <laughs> you, thank you, guys. <laughs> we have no Bless public you. comment. Bless you. <laughs> then we'll go on to unfinished business, which is the FY20 budget. Indeed it is, and I have gifts for you. So that way, you have gifts. I'd walk around and hand them to you, but I'll take you about five minutes to get out. I have one, so I'm okay. And so the second page of the handout is sort of the 30,000 foot view of um, the budget and where um, increases and decreases are happening overall. Um, the first area is um, with regard to salary changes and there is uh, a 3.31% increase in collective bargaining agreement uh, salaries. Um, has to do with steps as people get more seniority they move up a step on the ladder there's also a placeholder within that number for a potential um, cost of living adjustment um, with uh, collective bargaining uh, when a new contract is agreed to so we wanted to make sure that we factored something into the budget to be able to um, withstand that uh, non-union increase again there's some um, Projected increases, change in cost share for um, those particular folks, and um, the 12 month employees. And I apologize, Phil, it's probably the fourth time you've heard me say this, but um, okay. the. Um, Someone just came in. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, but um, the 12 month employees are usually 260 days a year. You figure five days a week times 52 weeks because they get benefit time. Next year is an unusual year. Because of leap year day and some other day that I can't remember, there's actually 262 work days next year. Hmm. So that increase includes having to add two extra days for 12 month employees um, you know, uh, within the budget. Uh, administratively speaking, there are some proje projected increases. There's some cost share change changes. Actually, the cost share for um, Conway is down a little bit. And this also adds the business manager position back into the budget. If you recall back when TMS first came, you transferred money out of the business manager salary line, put it into contracted services to pay for TMS. This represents that shift going back into the business manager salary line. Um, so you have uh, salary changes uh, projected at 3.58% increase. Um, when you look on the operational side of things, you can see again that shift of uh, the business manager going from a contracted service back into the salary line. Um, the TMS contract ends on uh, July 31st, which uh, gives us a, an opportunity of a month to be able to help transition the new person in and make sure that that is as smooth and seamless as it can be. Um, there are a little um, 
changes in some of the numbers and some of the percentages look kind of crazy, but it's because there wasn't much in that line to begin with, and when you increase it, it looks like a huge change, and it really is not. Uh, for example, psychological services is a 50% increase, but it's $250, so mm -hmm. it was 500 in the line, you know, uh, 250 going to 500, so. Mm -hmm. um, those kinds of things. So the net um, operational changes um, is $199 or about 0.5%, uh, uh, yeah, 0.05% uh, increase, sorry. Um, some other things just to highlight in the operational changes, separation costs, um, you've got a reduction in teacher retirement costs. Um, but you've got a little bit of an increase because there are some central office uh, retirements coming along. Um, Where is this? Uh, the separation cost, it's like uh, fifth oh, or sixth oh, yeah, on the bottom. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, just kind of a significant change. Some changes in licensing for uh, software and, and pricing for those kinds of things that um, I got from uh, the um, tech director. So. Um, all in all, the net change to the budget is $53,456, or 2.8%. So, um, next couple of pages walks you through the cherry sheets um, for Conway, and this is based on just the governor's proposal, because that's all we have right now. Um, so you can see that there is a slight increase in Chapter 78 uh, coming to Conway. You can see that um, charter tuition reimbursement is very small. Um, you can see your school choice receiving tuition is down a little bit. Um, back at the beginning of FY19, it was 235.057. It's now down to 226.781, and that's actually live now. There is a December adjustment that happens after the October 1st. Um, census of students in schools and at that point school choice claims are adjusted either up or down depending on how many students are there so I've already started to see that the decrease in the revenue um, accordingly so that number just gets carried forward to the next fiscal year and then it's adjusted um, halfway through again um, next lines are really more t um, town stuff but you, can, you know again it's all at the end of the day it's all one big um, you know, pot of money, so you can see that unrestricted government aid is up a little bit. Um, some other things are pretty stagnant, except for um, some exemptions are down, etc. So um, total estimated receipts are down just a touch, not by a whole lot, but um, you can see that. The second page shows the assessments, um, and um, you know, again, you can see what the town is being assessed on. You'll notice that school choice sending tuition is up a bit, but you'll notice that charter school sending tuition is um, not on the table. There are no uh, students in Conway right now going to a charter school. So they're doing more choice, but no charter. Oh, no elementary age students. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is not counting Frontier. This would be yeah. Yeah. Conway, Conway, Grimmer School. So. Uh, so again, you can see uh, at the very bottom of this, the net um, receipts uh, versus charges. So you're down um, a little bit from uh, the beginning of last year to this year by about uh, you know, 7,000 give or take. So, um, and part of what TMS does is tries to do a very transparent uh, style of budgeting so that you really can see some of the major funds that impact spending. So this is an analysis of school choice for uh, Conway. So you can see there was a balance forward of $211,026.95. There was an accrued payroll um, from FY18 uh, that was um, paid over the summer months. So that's taken from that. So the net is $210,276.95. Um, Again, the anticipated revenue um, is the 226 that we just saw in the cherry sheet. So that makes the total carryover plus the revenue coming in of $437,057.95. Um, the budgeted expenses and the anticipated expenses that we're going to have against um, the budget, uh, against uh, school choice, you can see below, 
I'm guessing that the reason why the support salary is $64,000 and it looks different on the anticipated expense side is because I'm guessing the um, budgetarily the early childhood instructional assistant may be tucked in that line instead of being in its own line, which that's something we can take care of. And then that behavioral um, interventionist, the $25,000 was not listed as a budget item. But even when all of that is said and done, your anticipated balance moving forward to FY20 will be $251,310.95. So that's really very healthy. You're the one school in the entire district that really is doing the spending in arrears um, model, um, which is kudos to you. Kudos. Well, get there, kudos. Huh? Kudos. Kudos. See, we get kudos. Yeah. And, and, and to kind of to go on that, other, there are other schools in our district that are in a lot of trouble because the temptation to go into that money to offset your, your, your current budget is tempting, you know, especially when times are get a little bit tougher. And, and you can tell just when you look at the cherry sheets, you look at the numbers of um, the amount of money we're getting for school choice adjustment in a single year. When you start playing closer to the fence, we know you got a nice buffer, but it's kind of that warning. It, is it, it is, this is the best model to be in. Um, but yeah. it, it also, but townspeople are going to say, well, even when you're sitting on that money, but if you bring that money over into your active budget and that those numbers change, kids end up going out, or family moves that you had in, they had two kids in for school choice, and all of a sudden you've got to make that difference in the school, current school year. And unfortunately, there we have other towns that had to make adjustments during the school year, and then in, it carries on into the next year until we can get the new kind of formulas brought forward. So it's a... You're in a healthy spot, and you want to kind of. It's good to, to have an understanding of that. You want to keep that there, mm -hmm. and understanding of um, it's the best. It could be one of the best practice. placement. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. In a school choice, you know, the the base um, amount is five thousand dollars, but if you have a student in special education, there's a special education increment that goes with that student based on the amount of services that that child receives. So. If a child leaves, it could be five thousand. It could be eighteen thousand. It could be nine thousand, depending on what the special education needs are. So, not every child is just a straight five thousand mm -hmm. dollar number. So that's something also that one has to be mindful of. So you are in a very good place, and it's a great place to stay in for sure. Can um, I ask you a question? So, so thinking about the other towns, you were just talking about Conway compared to the other towns. Do they have kids going to charter schools? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I mean, you were saying Conway has nobody leaving Conway Elementary for a charter school. This Not year. Right. This, this year. year. They had one last year, right? But we've, we've but this year they have none. And 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 I'm wondering if that's one of the differences because the charter schools are expensive and that would really eat into that no, that budget. The because the <clears throat> the money goes comes direct from the town, not the school budget at the local at the elementary level. At Frontier, Frontier acts as its own town. So anybody at Frontier who's going to charter comes out of the Frontier budget. But in in the towns, it doesn't come direct out of the it comes out of the, the town. It comes out of the town budget, not the school, school budget. budget. Right. I see. I was trying to understand. I mean, we're, you're saying we're we're able to stay a year ahead ahead, which is good, and. And does the charter money come out of that same pot of the of the school choice income? No, it, comes it doesn't. Out of town. No, it's all about revenue. So it's not about expenses going out. So when we're saying you're staying ahead, it's is you know you really want to have um, a cushion so that if you have lose students who are revenue in, then your revenue comes down. If you're spending that revenue, then you're going right. to have to make it up for right. the local budget. Yeah. That, yeah. Why you don't want to do it. So, but yeah. everything else is going to the town. So, well, in your particular seat, you care about both numbers. In this particular budget, they're caring more about what the revenue side is on, on the school choice. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But and if we had somebody move into district and they needed an out of district placement for their kids, that could be anywhere from. Eighty thousand dollars to right. hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the type of placement they need. Right. The eighty might just be for transportation. The eighty, yeah. <laughs> the eighty would be a lesser, you know, a day. Yeah, yeah. A day placement, you know, is between Local. eighty and a hundred right. thousand dollars plus a bus ride. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's circuit breaker and other things. There's mm -hmm. the camera. Right. So there's other ways to get some of that money back. But the immediate thing you have, in a, you have the ability, because you remember before school choice, usually the town used to have. 
the ability, to, they, I don't know if, if Conway does, but many towns do, they have a money that's sitting there in case of an emergency for the school on placements. Does, does Conway do that? Where you hold like around $35,000 in case of a... I would they doubt it. They don't. They, yeah, we, we, I was in school Tom meeting. Left. We, we, have a, we have a general stabilization fund. Okay, so it would, made, it would eventually would have came from that before the school would have to go directly to the town and ask for it. Now the school has the ability to cover, um, cover at least for that time being. There. Eventually it goes to the town, you know, because it, you know, like, yep. anyway. yep. So um, proposed FY20 expenses um, just adds a uh, classroom I, uh, instructional assistant into that line um, just to kind of keep the local number as low as we could possibly keep it. But again, if you're looking at, again, the budget, the contracted behavioral interventionist um, is probably going to be some need for some more of that services. So we want to account for that as a budget item, not just, you know, a hopeful thing. So that, again, we're projecting uh, properly for you. So proposed um, FY20 expenses out of school choice, uh, just shy of $240,000. And even at that, it leaves you with a projected healthy balance of $238,115 um, moving at the end of FY20 and into FY21. Mm -hmm. So you're really in a very healthy place in school choice. So that's the good news. We like that. There's a lot of good news in this budget, actually. Mm -hmm. so. how, many, how many IAs are there? In the school. The annual question. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two annual questions. Okay, okay. What, what was the other one? What was the other one? <laughs> How many kids from Conway go to the school? Yeah, yeah. Those are two good questions. Yeah. So, how many IAs have you? The Turks and Rollins for Conway. Kristen, I'm, I'm sorry. Kristen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to count them out. I don't know off the top of my head, so um, give me one second. I have that right here. Preschool, so preschool. Um, no, K through, K through, K through six. And not, and excluding wings, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Could wing, someone be in wings from town? Just give the sheet yes. and make her go through yeah, it. They could be. Yeah. This doesn't have the AIAs. Yeah. It just has That's the a different oh funding God, formula. Yeah, six though. classrooms. For wings. Oh, yeah, right there. Six, yeah. six classrooms. <coughs> one kindergarten. One kindergarten. Two mm -hmm. uh, early childhood. That's pre K. K through six. How many kids from town? Oh, she's uh, out I have that here. Um, uh, eight, 98. 98. Okay. 98. Two, two, three. How many, how no. many uh, IAs? 91. Four. No. 91. K through six. Uh, <laughs> Seven. Seven of them? Seven classroom instructional assistants. Well, they're listed as classroom instructional assistants, but we don't have like one per classroom. We have kids with special needs that might require something. Yeah, but. Right, that's basically what IAs do, right? Right, mostly for special needs. Yeah. Well, helps little balance of well, in the lower students grades, students they help out with the teachers as well. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, they fan out with the regular kids also for mm -hmm. math support, stuff like that. Reading. And there's about 45 school choice kids coming in? There's 90, 91 resident boys and girls. Yeah. 91. There are eight tuition in boys and girls. Mm. And there are 20, uh, 36 school choice boys and girls. Mm -hmm. For a total of 135 kids. K through six. K through six. Pre K through six. Pre K through six. Do you want the? Do you want this total sheet? Yeah, you can have that. You can have. Oh. Yeah. Let me supply this. So if I, if I look at page three, I don't have multiple copies of it. Where, where you say the school copy. choice receiving tuition. But, but is that including the tuition in kids? Are, are they lumped question. in with school choice? That's a good question. No. No. Different tuition in kids are not school choice kids. It's a different funding. It's a different billing, different funding. Yeah. So, so I, I didn't see that income on this, on page three, but. That's because this is the cherry sheet that comes from the state. So the state would not have tuition numbers in it as a revenue source. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they don't count that as part of uh, the whole formula, foundation formula and whatever. So, 
Um, the next revolving account I just took a look at only because there is a lot of money going in and out and wanted to make sure that that was in a healthy place as well as your special education revolving fund uh, for the WINGS program. Um, Where so are we? This page is on six. page six. Um, so there is a balance forward. Um, it has not yet been totally verified with the town, but the balance forward is 105,931. Um, anticipated revenue for the students coming in to Wings, either through tuition or choice, is $253,350. So the total anticipated revenue in the balance carrying forward is $359,282. Um, as you can see, the um, anticipated expenses are slightly less than the budgeted expenses. So um, the anticipated val balance based on the expense side of it um, going forward to um, FY20 is $112,055. So that's, again, very healthy moving forward for that account. Um, roughly speaking, I spoke with the... Uh, Director of Special Education, she said, roughly speaking, probably to anticipate about $250,000 coming in again next year. Um, so again, put you in a very healthy place um, with some salary increases and, and um, you know, that kind of thing, um, leaving you at the end of FY20 with still $100,000 uh, plus. So again, that account is very healthy. So. I uh, just thought that would be uh, something to uh, share with you. Uh, and then the last page is the budget line by line. Um, and how we work this at TMS is in the um, name of full transparency, we show you all of the expenses, and then we sort of take off what is offset by other uh, funding sources. So the blue column on the left is the a total FY19 adjusted budget, and it reflects the changes that I gave you tonight in the expenditure report. Um, the all funds budget is actual costs of a lot of things, um, and then the right hand side is the net after we take away funding from other sources. Um, that would be the town's budget for um, Conway Grammar School. And just to give you an example of how that works, if you look on page eight, you'll notice that. For, um, you know, there's a line that says um, salary sped substantially separate. Uh, it's under teacher's class from 2305. You'll notice in the all funds budget, it's 157245 But if you notice on the right-hand side, it's a zero because everything is covered by the sped revolving women's tuition. So it just gives you a chance to see where all of the funding sources are being brought to bear on, on that. You know, early childhood teachers. The, you know, they their salaries, you know, are seventy six thousand six ninety five, but twenty five of it is coming from early childhood revolving. Mm -hmm. So the net is fifty one six ninety five. So for the purposes of comparing last year, this year, if you look at those two blue columns, that's really what what gives you the the town to the town. Um, uh, way over on the right hand side of all of uh, the pages is just line by line what the, the various increases and decreases are within the budget. And if you go to the bottom of page 11, um, we have the grand total, which is uh, $1,962,972,272. Uh, that represents an increase of $53,456 or 2.8%. Are there any anticipated health insurance increases or changes, or if we were came in at zero increase this year? Yeah, the, the actual plans are at zero increase for both um, yeah. dental and um, health. Mm -hmm. We did factor in you because you do have. Sugar, right? You don't count out the final figures until mid March or something, right? The Hampshire Collaborative. Mm -hmm. the, Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke explained that at some time around mid March the final figures come through, right? Right, and they have told us that there will be no increases no increase. for mm -hmm. um, either dental or health insurance at this point. Mm -hmm. So we did factor in um, a little bit of, a, of an increase just to cover plan changes or a new employee coming in who might take a different plan than somebody who was leaving or whatever else, because yep. you want to have that buffer in there um, yep. just to make sure that you're taking care of things. Mm -hmm. so, um,
all looks very reasonable. This is, uh, yeah. This budget's so low, you wonder whether you forgot something. I was going to say, Kristen, have you put everything in here you need? Yeah, Missing? so, um, are you sure? I, I was hoping to keep exactly what we had, um, and, and that's what we did. We're running a great program, a great <coughs> school, and, um, Supplies, no. fixes, changes, we're... You guys are, you and the town are really so supportive, you know. We, we talked at one point about um, the possibility of a, a, a reading teacher pot love checks. The caseload is very, very high. Mm -hmm. um, but looking at scores and looking at scores most recently, I, I don't know that the need's there. Um, what she should do, really, is get an intern, because she's an amazing model right. for anybody agree the best everybody the should best. learn from her yeah she really best. is amazing best and it keeps you know you always worry the first place that sometimes schools cut are you know the strings and band and all that so it keeps all of that and, and this is a good level to this one yeah. mm -hmm. i'm thrilled it's a good year to be low yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, because I mean, as a school department, yeah. we work to, you know, we do work together and we do keep the eye on each other's budget mm -hmm. and with the assessment from Frontier. Yeah. You know what it is. No, this is, <clears throat> this is good. This would be good to put this in the warrant ahead of Frontier. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. Um, see what I can do about that. But the, Grammar um, comes before, no, F comes before G. Uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I thought it, it's not just that did not help you. It's just it, it's, it's not just that it's low, um, and that and the increase in the assessment is under sixty thousand, which is just really remarkable from year to year. It's this barely yeah. exceeds the rate of inflation in our country right now, and um, and with the automatic pay raises. Yeah, it, and remarkable. with the big with the the people are still. I still get a lot of comments about the Boston Globe Mass Live ratings of all the whatever in Conway was 18th in the state and the only one in Western Mass that was higher um, was Warwick and they're about to close or be closed um, so That's sad. yeah but we're about to be the best elementary school in Western Mass well we are anyway according, according, according to Mass Law yeah, according to Mass Law yeah, whatever. according so, to us right right yeah we got it so that's really good right. It's a really good budget. Any further questions? Um, we move the tentative budget for forward to, uh, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I thought we didn't need a vote tonight. I thought it was still discussed. Well, right? Okay. No. This is not the final, this is the preliminary. No, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're not voting just discussion. All right. All right. Sounds good. I, I want to quit going back to Frontier Regional. The, uh, the foundational computation, that's the figures that are submitted to DESE, the 13 students, and it's not, how did that, who, who sends up to whom who's trying to understand the whole chain of information? Alan, it's not the 13 students that's the cause of that. It's the increase in the municipal uh, valuation, our valuation increase in the cherry sheet is 4.85% this year. Uh -huh. And that's, that's what accounts for almost all, uh, so, so something like eighty percent. So something like eighty, 80 something like eighty percent of the increase of our our frontier assessment uh -huh. is due to the relative increase in the town's net worth versus the other three towns in the region, which okay. all were close to zero. All right. um, and so they redo your foundational budget before you even get to the budget to our budget. Uh -huh. And so we end up starting ground zero right. behind a hundred grand in the right. budget. Right. Because, 100, 100 be, because, because <coughs> that's in, in assessment. Well, because just the in, money just in the came assessment. in from where did you say? Trans Canada's payment of whatever, and the, oh. uh, for, well, that's what I'm telling you. But that the th it was three main drivers. It was the utility paying for the dam for the first uh -huh. time since Hurricane Irene. Uh -huh. It was Comcast um, and all of the valuation for all their polls, uh -huh. and um, and then the reassessment that found uh, most people in Conway houses became worth more yeah um, so that was those three things combined to a 4.85 percent and, and that so and, and so they redo they redo the foundation increase in the foundation support yeah yeah and, and, and there's nothing we can do about that those are numbers that are the computer generated and yeah, then so they, that's, from the, that's from the formulas then. yeah 
And and I said, why, why can't that Trans Canada money go into something like a, you know, a hurricane fund or something that makes our value yeah. not go up? Not that more of an budget, right, right, more of an emergency or right. whatever. But, but I guess we don't get to decide that. Because yeah, that's that's from that. the generation of power on their dam in the Deerfield, which is operating for the first time since the hurricane. Mm. Right, right, right. And as far as the state's concerned, Conway's considered like a resort community. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. So the, the, the good news is that... Don't this, spread so the word. A, a good so news is that... <laughs> more money. You get more money there at home, and there are no kids going to school. No kids working. Yeah. Don't spread the word. So a bunch of that is a one-off thing, though, so that it shouldn't be like this next year, All but right. that's... Small comfort. We have a lot of discussions. Well, it's yeah, if Trans Canada, if they keep working, we'll keep generating money. Just give me a practice run. That's yeah, go, yeah, bring it on. I, I need the practice. That's what we well, all do. This, this is we the need the practice runs on this. Unless they added something to our budget. What's that? The thirteen kids. Oh, that change does that number does change your assessment. Yeah, yeah. Sure. it does. It does, it does mm -hmm. do that. And when you talk about how do you track them, so we. What, all the, what are we talking about? Thirteen kids. With, there's just thirteen more kids at front. At front, we're talking about oh. the front. Remember, we're talking about the frontier budget. Because those are, <laughs> it was we bounced around, but there's four, thirteen more kids at frontier than there That's was. That's a good thing. In, in a five-year-old average, right? But that costs the town more too. It costs yeah. the town money to send it to the frontier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This didn't get, get tracked, so it looks like a big jump year on year because it wasn't properly represented in the previous year, that's all. Though it means that we've been doing our job of trying to market Frontier but, to our own kids. But we, yeah. so because you don't, historically, not a lot of Conway kids go to Frontier. But what you don't see, what you don't see is that your 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 charter choice, your charter numbers are not in our budget. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So you're not seeing where, you're not seeing where you, the difference of the, of the savings there is. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. As, as opposed to Conway kids, because it gets, gets all lumped together. So what does charter cost? Twenty thousand dollars a kid for high school. For Sorry, high school. Yeah. Yeah. high school. It's twenty thousand. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's that the game we play for every. We have to get four kids for every one that goes out. Mm -hmm. um, and and how we, is we that talked fair? about. Well, when you talk about com competition for students, about that's fair. how the, you know, it's not. That's crazy. You know, and then eighty-seven percent of our kids go to a two or four-year college, but there's a reason to have a charter school. Mm -hmm. but don't get me going. Um, <laughs> But you're asking about how we track the students. Students are tracked much like the government tracks us for taxes. And since the East Kid has a, has a number that's tracked through the state, we have to report where they are twice a year. They find, they, they, so they're all kind of tracked. It's not like someone's going up, oh, we missed one, and you're adding one. They're kind of tracked all the way through, all the way through the MCAS testing and all the other. They're kind of followed like that. It's a, it's a big, there's a big brother it's kind of thing. Where who's, tracking uh, exactly case. who's where and that kind of stuff. So the uh, uh, sixty-five thousand $70 increase, about a hundred thousand of that is because of these formulation increase, correct? Yeah. It's just brutal. Yeah. Well, brutal. yes, I mean, yeah, it, it is. But I mean, as I said earlier, money comes we didn't in have and it just goes money straight in out. And the money goes right there to there. But so it's kind of a wash, really. You know, we did. The other towns are. The other towns like are very happy. They should be coming to it's not her. That we're spending for the entire increase in their budget. <laughs> exactly. They should be buying us beers at the Conway Inn. <laughs> they should come up and, and yes, exactly. There you go. Thank you. I think I'll propose it. <laughs> <laughs> if the if the new mayor wanted dispensary yeah. hands out free samples at town meeting before we get to the budget. Then our chances improve. Well, but that will also be an income generator. We'll put up the revenue in town, which will drive our budget. Are worth up. All right, we're moving on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, new business. Oh, on to marijuana. Yeah. Um, what is what is our what's the school's policy? Well, Wait, that's what, that's what we're that's what we're discussing today. Okay. So um, basically, this is the um, second. I think I sent you guys the just the, the notice that we received that there's um, talk about putting in a cultivation um, uh, manufacturing establishment. Um, this is has also happened in the town of Waitley. Um, in the town of Waitley, it happened right next door to the school, Whoa. so it was very it was much different, and so there's a lot more um, you know talk about you know impact to what's going on in. The, they don't um, have a rule about distance from the school. Well, they they they, they, they did their it's the, the planning boards and their whatever they did their did their jobs. And okay. at the same time, it's a agricultural community, and that's a cash crop right now. So it's kind of that, that balancing the two things out. And so I only brought it up because you know I was notified as the school, um, and I passed it on to you. But just just to, so that we have a conversation because it's not for me alone. It's a community decision. 
um, how the school feels. Sometimes towns are um, attaching educational, um, connecting educational uh, revenues from them um, to go to health services and talk, uh, not health services, but health, teaching health and health curriculums and that kind of stuff. So we, the town of Wheatley is going to is asked for a certain amount of money to go to the elementary school, you know, in that regards to, you know, it's kind of the, uh, I'm trying to think of the proper term for it, but you know, the, uh, I guess it's, it's the syntax of, you know, if, if, you, if you're doing one thing, you're educating well, on the other side. So, um, <laughs> so the, what I know, so this was a well attended meeting. So I was like the, somewhere and the, saw the place. With, if it's a retail establishment, if it's the retail yeah. establishment, the, the town can get tax tax payments of up to three percent oh. for cultivation and manufacturing. The town can get community host uh, agreement payments of up to three percent, but they have to. They're supposed to be grounded in some type of reality. Um, correlating with the town's increased costs um, associated with having them as businesses in the town. So the police department will go. Well, so it's not so so my argument in all that is that it's not just the so if the police department says yes, we'll be doing more patrols, then it's not just increased hours of police, it's the increase it's a percentage of the vehicle and amortization, it's the necessary staff that's required to process the police officer's paycheck and his retirement and et cetera, et cetera. And the same thing with roads. They, they, you know, they're on a dirt road that's barely maintained. There's going to be more vehicles. They're going to need to, and so it's percentage of all the highway vehicles. Where and, are they going? Um, one's going to be... Oh, there's two? Yeah, there's uh, the one on Roaringbrook Road is doing their public meeting tomorrow night. Um, Where on Roaringbrook Road? By Waitley Glen. Waitley Glen Road. Waitley Glen Road and Warringbrook Road. Mm -hmm. They're building their own. Oh, they're just. They want to do a cultivation, a, a, a cooperative. In a blue house? Yeah, or next to it in some of that land, or we'll find out. Blue house? We'll find out. But so, so part of this is sort of demonstrating what the costs are, and and um, and and my take for the school at least has been the school has a school psychologist that does that has the the, the beginning of drug education to to, mm -hmm. to, what, to age appropriate kids and whatnot and that with you know that that there would be maybe more more of a discussion about this one substance than there is yeah. currently um so that there's the a, a, a some amount that they should be mm -hmm. but all of which would total up to three percent we can't exceed that so um but there's talk of these gr uh, growers litigating and uh, be, be the, the the determination by the towns that their mm -hmm. increased expenses of the towns are actually three percent. Well, that's not the, really going to build very uh, they, yeah, that's relations, right, is it? Right, right. Or um, make people welcome you to but, town. Uh, and the first, the first grow, the first uh, growers that got licensed in the state signed on to all kinds of extra. There's some of the, you should look at the city of Salem's agreement with the with the first. Um, mm. And it included a brand new school psychologist, and it included transport. It included yeah. all kinds of goodies, and um, um, apparently because they, you know, we're not going to be in line for anything like that. That's wrong. Well, I at what this... point do you ask for that kind of stuff? Um, to begin licensing, it's got to be all set out, like when they're. So the, we should be asking now. Right. So. If there are things we want. Right. Besides. <clears throat> Besides contribution towards, I mean, we already pay for the school like uh, so do, it would be paying more for this. It would, I, I don't. I don't know uh, how it's developmentally relevant it is for the um, elementary for the school. elementary level. If you, if you're building it in the middle and high school catchment area, I think it's extremely relevant. Well, but the sooner you educate, the better. Yeah. The what, younger what, you educate, what grade, the better. I mean, yeah. What is in you know what exists now. What is Desi's recommendation now? Well, the only health programming they do in elementary yeah. school is a little little pad of little, sex ed. Little puberty stuff. Yeah. Starting in fifth. So they do nothing. It. Right. So they should do more. Yeah. But I, I would say sixth, sixth, I would say sixth grade is certainly the time to start talking yeah, about I, that. I agree. As a prevention yeah. for middle school. Yeah, it's, it's we've sure. We've been talking. I'm curious a lot about, about the research about that. Yeah, we've yeah. been talking a lot about. Um, mm -hmm want to introduce some of this and I, I, I feel like that I, I want to do mm -hmm. a little more research I don't want to um, shelter our kids but I don't want to give I, yeah I, 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 
I think that could be quickly researched and determined. But they're right, seeing not it in their community and at home. So the sooner no, you talk about be, it, the better. Am I being naive? Because You're being I don't naive. feel like our sixth graders are talking about it. They may not be, but as soon as they hit frontier, they are. Yeah, it's, it's, better it's, the, to it's the prevention a value. It's language. the prevention value. Yeah. It's that ratio of exposure and prevention value yeah. mm -hmm. before they go with the older kids. Or even if you just it's dump it into health, like yeah. you know, act, like you do. You have yeah. health programs. Yeah. You have the you walking. You have the running. Yeah, yeah. That could be. Yeah. You could fund all those yeah. things you do. Right. 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 You want to include a needs assessment with parents as well, if that well, was that's ever, huge. Yeah. if, if Absolutely. it was ever proposed. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's in, huge. In terms of security, don't these facilities, isn't part of the licensure, they have to have their own security system? Yeah, and that's the and, state agency that regulates right. the security. The yeah. towns can't even do that. The, right. But the, the, it's a huge cost thing. That, that's right. why you need a half million dollars right. to do one of these. Right. Primarily yeah. because of the security requirements. Right. So this, of course, the police well, of town is still going to be interested in the facility and stuff, but it's a pretty robust security right. system. You can't build this without that. Right. Right. So. All right. Um, Again, so should we write a letter to them, requesting money to be? Assigned? Well, I mean, I guess it would come down to the town negotiating what they're looking at for the other. The other items in the sense of the police, as you were saying, the breakdown, so if they're doing Kristen, that, are they looking at Kristen, education? Kristen, could you write a letter to the town and, Yeah, saying, that, would, that would be the letter to the town. I can also find out what, what Wheatley has done. Um, you know, if we're moving forward with this, absolutely. that we could get some money for our health and education. Yeah. Health and, education education and then program. the question is, you know, and is a small percentage of that thing go also to Frontier? You know, because right. your kids also go to Frontier, so it's, the, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and I say, we were talking about the same thing about with Whaley. Is, is there a percentage of that, some of that money, you're not talking about a lot. No, but you've got to ask now. Know, right, yeah. in the sense of, but, like you, ask you know, now when they're that, some of you know, right. some local school and then there's a little bit go on to Frontier as well. And, you know, that can help out with, you know, some curriculum materials and, you know, that kind of thing. And again, it doesn't have to be anti anything. It could just be healthy lifestyles and wellness. And that's what I exercise, you know, right. That's exactly yeah. it. So, yeah. so that's what uh, I'm thinking. Not, not to and they do a lot of those, but they're very on a budget this thin or no money no at all. Right. Yeah. So why not see if we can beef them up, idea. you know, buy some t-shirts, you know, get the kids more incentivized to participate or whatever it is. I think it's a great idea. So. All righty. Good. 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 Thank you. And you think now is a good time to say Yeah, that? definitely. Totally. It's like negotiating your job. Yeah. Right. They're, they're both ask. really eager to get started so beginning. that they can have something to market this year. Right. Oh, okay. And the state agency is slow. And, and our newly mandated breakfast program, what is that all about? All right. So um, I, I handed out the letter that we got from the state. <clears throat> and basically... Um, there are two categories, if you look at the bottom of page one, that require you to, as a school, to provide um, a breakfast program. And one is that if 40% of your lunch is served um, over the past two years um, were free, or reduced prices, or that you have 50 or more students with reduced price um, applications at the school. I so we don't have either. You do. We do. Now you do. If you turn to page two, they're saying you do. And what? so you are now mandated, as you can look below but halfway down on the, the bold italics to offer this um, start breakfast program by October 1, 2019. Are there statistics right? I was very surprised to be honest with you. We have a long tradition of people that qual in this town of people that qualify for aid of mm, one nature or another no, that don't, that don't like, go for it. Yeah, but you, they would have had to fill out the form. Right, but yeah. we got the letter, so. I'm like, okay, let's go for it. Who doesn't want to serve breakfast in school, right? That's true. Can we use local eggs? But often they pull, they don't, it's not necessarily on the free and reduced lunch forms anymore. They pull that number right out of the Department of Transitional Assistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, still surprised. The early. If I'm staff, I, I love it. You get it. You can always have a toasted bagel, you get some eggs, whatever, every morning. So What's it going to cost us? Well, that's a very good. That's always the next good question. <laughs> you, you should become chair. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was cute. Um, so, 
understand that because you put this in that you also would encourage students who are free to reduced to and once and, and once they get involved with it there's a there is a mathematical equation you have to have so many students of free and reduced lunch engaged in it in order to keep it um yeah. sustainable to not right. you know not to go into debt um, at the same time it also allows um, the, the positive side is that you're running late one morning your kid can grab a snack at, at school or you totally. forgot to pack a snack they can be you know in the way that we can build now is right to their to their lunch card of healthy food and that kind of thing so yeah. um, you know that, that's the positive side um, and also encourage you know those kids who did not have a complete meal at home can now get one in classroom. I and mean, you're going to talk a little bit about you very. We're, we're still in the preliminary talking about this. We got some time to to um, vet this out. But you were talking with um, yeah, Mary with and Mary, I met and we were talking about having a, a grab and go type of option. Bagels, of course, and um, you know cereal, and milk, and fruit, and um, string cheese, and obviously mm -hmm. things that are approved. Right, you need some protein in there. Sure. Yeah. We had a drive through yeah. window to the circle out front. And well, we were actually thinking about having a cart and having a grab and go so kids can, and if you th a kid, if somebody forgets their snack, they could buy a snack, you know. Um, and then kids would go right to their classrooms and eat breakfast. Um, in my former district, we had free breakfast for all, and what worked best was kids eating in the classroom rather than a transition from the lunchroom to the um, Does it add to janitorial costs? You know, no, all? and Jeannie starts at 7, and if we have a grab-and-go type of thing, it, it you know, it's really going to be just putting things together. Um, I mean, the kids, kids can still have um, French toast sticks and sausage, you know, and things like that. So it won't add to um, anything, really. It won't add to any labor expense? No more hours? No, How, right? No. Wow. Because, okay, so a couple things. That doesn't You know why? Because I, I'm not explaining everything. So we've gone from three lunches to two lunches. It's That's freed up a half hour uh, for cafeteria staff. So okay. that's a half hour that can go to the breakfast part. My guess is they'll maybe need 45 minutes, right? So there's an extra 15 minutes. So I think we covered that by going to two. Is the food lunches. coming through their kitchen or is yes. it coming from a central location their delivered kitchen. here? Okay. Their kitchen, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then we see if we're doing okay. So we're mandated for it next year. Sometimes what happens is they mandate it for you for one year and then they don't mandate it again. So if that's the case, we can see where we're at and. You don't want to that's lose true. money, obviously. So okay. they can keep Sorry. some statistics yeah. on it. Yeah. You can yeah. see some, yeah. how many people. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I need to pay attention. something that I know is that for a different meeting, but our um, unpaid lunch bills are up there again. Oh okay. no! So I don't want to. I also don't want to start playing bill collector for unpaid breakfast bills. You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, families will be charged for it. Those that aren't free and reduced. Those that aren't free and reduced, which would be charged. So, same thing like Frontier. It's not. It's you know, a dollar, whatever. It's really. But you'd also. I mean, there's some management of that where you're going to have to have some rules because families may not. You had a full breakfast, and then you know, Phil goes to school, and you know, you had a full breakfast, and now he wants to have. And he just wants to have a snack, <laughs> and you know, and then parents get the bill, and they go, "Wait a minute." You know, you have an unsupervised credit card here totally. <laughs> to the food service. Exactly. Uh, so we're going to have to have some kind of balances there where they're going to have to have pre I don't know, want to figure out what the yeah. what that looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, clearly other schools, we have other schools in the district that have this. Um, Frontier was also um, was mandated this past year to offer breakfast. Mm -hmm. And we, we barely break even. Um, and, and that's more about, you know, kids just being in a rush in the morning yeah. and not wanting to go down to the cafeteria and getting it. And... You know, so well, they, they had a lot of carts up front. I bet you. Uh, and they tried different things to do that. Yeah. And so it's a little, um, you know, it's it's they've gotten numbers up because when people know they, you know, they have to get down there and do it once, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so we probably rolled off that way to. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. anyway, so I wanted to bring that to your attention. That's pretty much where we're at. So did we put it in the budget? Um. No. No. We don't. We we haven't because we want to. We're going to hope that it's going to be self sustaining. Self sustaining. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, not been our experience. <laughs> if the unpaid <laughs> bills continue to go up, we have to bring that back to a discussion. Oh, always, it's always. Currently, I mean, 
I worked really hard last year, uh, you know, around this time to cut it down, but you know, it's a tough job as a principal. You know? yeah. Currently, we're at we're at thirty six hundred dollars mm -hmm. in unpaid bills, and it, you know, it's really it's the worst part of my job by far. Yeah. Is being paying bill collector. Right? I don't think it's a Charles Dickens intervention to give an alternative nutritional lunch. Mm -hmm. That's just me. You know, something that doesn't cost a lot of money but has the same nutritional benefits. Mm -hmm. You know? Maybe you should do at the end of the year. You should. Uh, <laughs> I think we just have to look do at Do what it. the library does, you, you know, know, and you so. get a discount if you pay your bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like free free return day or something. Do you like twenty five percent off if you pay your bill in full yeah. today? If it's a lot of repeat, because I bet you it would help. I don't think it's okay. I think if you're struggling, then absolutely we have to find a way to help families do that. But if there's if people aren't responding to you, yeah, that's right. not okay. It's that's it's not okay. You know, right. So. right. I have always, I'll work, I'll I have work always with anybody, you know, if they if they call and say, we'll, we'll figure out a way, but yeah, it's a, yeah. Just engage. I let, let's have yeah. the marijuana establishment pay for our unpaid <laughs> lunch <laughs> bills. That would be a big enabler. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. yeah. Why are you going to eat Doritos? Both <laughs> yeah. Why are you going to eat Doritos? Both yeah. problems. I, can we tie that into the into chairperson? <laughs> <laughs> Can we tie that? Let's connect yeah. the dots somehow. Healthy eating. Healthy eating. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We solved the un the unpleasant part of your job, Kirsten, hopefully. All right. Alrighty. So we need no votes for that? Mm -hmm. No. What did you post as it unfolds? We're on to any any reports. Okay, lots of reports. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't able to Those were cool. Email attachments. Lots of good ones. I have it. I think it is. I'm sorry, he just popped up out of here somewhere. So, um, hand dryers. Um, Bruce is coming back. Hand dryers, five thousand dollars in the warrant. Um, and um. Oh, good, jeez. Mm-hmm. So our current plan is to use Excel hand dryers. Um. A budget price of twelve fifty to fifteen hundred. It's selling four. Um, if the installation runs a bit over five thousand budget, there appears to be adequate funding in this year's maintenance budget. To cool. Come. That will save paper trails so yep. much. So that should be done during April break. Awesome. Bottle water. The total cost was one thousand one hundred sixteen dollars and eighty six cents, which has already come out of our budget. We had to pay that bill. So I don't know what you want to do about that if anything um, we'll be charging it to the well company um yeah did you send this to did you send the bill or, or anything to the town coordinator to forward it to the well company he's still doing the interactions with them right yeah i haven't heard anything about that i mean i don't know what the they might say no but they certainly won't say yes if they're not asked right i mean i knew they were talking about doing that but we can we can follow up there. Yeah, I need that total sent. Um, card access, you had asked about getting a estimate for that. So um, the bottom line estimate will be $17,500. Um, new equipment for card access and allowances for hardware upgrade and rekeying. Conway would likely do the three doors, the main entrance, the back entry, and the door used by the out-of-school time program. Um, and then the hydration station, which um, Darius had recommended. Oh, we totally need that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get yeah. those great. 2,500 um, is the estimate. And so we're going to really push that and hopefully have that by, by May. Maybe we need like two or three of them. Don't yeah, we? right. We'll start with the one. And, and then um, we still have money left for... Um, <laughs> Flooring, so <laughs> next the on the list is the too, you get <laughs> <laughs> next is the yeah. boy. Get, wonder if they're going to get a lot of cu enough customers to. Some, um, learning lab floor is next on the list, um, and so we're hoping to do that during spring break. Nice, nice to see progress on these things. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? Oh, it wasn't even my turn, I think. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, 
So attach is page three is an overview of our NWEA uh, for January 2019. And again, this is a really good dipstick. It's um, the closest test that I've seen in my career that is um, accurate to MCAS. And the MCAS isn't the end all be all, but um, and you have to remember that. Um, we have in reading 72 percent of our students are currently at benchmark which is very high mm -hmm. and in math 70 percent of our students are at benchmark our real oh that didn't point out right our real focus um when we ended last year was the bottom right corner which is actually high growth low achievement so we had kids in that block that for mcas they they will score you on how the kid scores and then their growth. So we were having kids with high growth but low achievement. Good, but yeah. after analyzing those specific kids, what we found out is that 50% of that 25% um, are so high that you're talking they just needed to answer that one last question oh, correctly. 50% okay. of that 24% we're really focusing on moving them up, but um, uh, that's how that is rolled out. So mm -hmm. our instructional leadership team really broke, have, we've broken this apart, we've looked at kids, we've looked at services. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but our MCAS score showed something really, um, just really phenomenal, something that you don't often see. And that is the low, uh, the um, high needs student, Mm -hmm. So the students, I'm more really going to say the students that Mrs. Paulette Lovecheck services mm -hmm. in collaboration with a teacher made more progress than some of our, than our typical students, which is a really incredible profile mm -hmm. and um, and um, something that would you know she should be very yeah, absolutely the classroom mm -hmm. teachers. Yeah. So we keep a really good eye on that. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're pleased that those scores were still working hard. The one thing I love about the staff is, you know, they just keep getting better and better. You know, they never stop. They never stop with the uh, um, research and the new strategies. You know, you could have a school that's high functioning and saying, okay, you know, good enough. We're doing great. And they don't. They just, you know, you give them more and they get better. You give them more and they get better. I said the most challenging part of my job when I started was how to make a great staff even better, and it just happens over and over and over again. So, those are the NWEA scores. Um, I attached just some the Conway School dates, just so you can see what goes on in the school. So, who's reading tomorrow? Um, Good. Yay! Nice. I'm really excited. I'm the, the kids only one that can. So excited. Come on. I got a meeting. Ah, load off. So excited. Um, and then early release professional development. One thing that we noticed in um, our scores is that fractions, just in general, um, were a weaker area. So we're um, Jen, Jen Wheeler's leading a lunch and learn series on unpacking fractions um, for six weeks, and all of our classroom teachers are signed up for it. So, that, so, so that's a percentage of your professional development. Hey. It's a what? Mm -hmm. That was a fraction. That was fractional humor. <laughs> 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 So we're back to early releases. We didn't have any early releases in January and February. Um, we're back to them starting this week. This week will be a teacher collaboration day, and then next week will build, be a building-based day. Um, we have a high number of students in the um, extended care. Um, but we started something new. It's, it's brilliant. I can't believe we hadn't thought of this before, but we used to have all the kids together and we divide up and do little groups and things like this, but now we're keeping each grade level with the IA that works in that grade level or is familiar with that grade level, and then they might join with another grade, but it's so much more manageable. So, But we have um, sometimes up to 60 kids in the program. Wow. Well, this is the early release. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So that's the report. Uh, Darius called yesterday said, I, I'm glad you're not here in my office because I'm wearing beach kind of clothes, you know, <laughs> appropriate beach clothes, because it's um, that was our theme for the day with Dr. Seuss's birthday. But I said, but, oh, but awesome. the NWAA scores are up. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> 
and, and I gotta, you know, just to, I don't throw, as you guys probably know me well enough, I don't throw compliments out a lot, um, but I gotta tell you, Kristen does, really does breathe the idea that we're, we're good, we're great, mm -hmm. but we can be better. Yeah. And she gets, and she has her staff mm -hmm. believing that as well. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's it's not about you know reaching the mark and it's, not, it's how can we be better? How can we do this better? You know, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, in, awesome. in any in anything you do, if you're a chef, mm -hmm. right. tastes delicious. But how can I make this better? Right. You know, they're doing the same yeah, kind yeah. of thing here at um, Conway. It's just amazing. And it's, when I've come up and uh, observed and just kind of been a part of the culture that's created, it's you can you see it, mm -hmm. you see it. People want to improve, so that's right. great. We appreciate it for sure. <coughs> All righty. Um, capital projects. That was this. She just did that. Capital projects. Yeah, she did yep. that. Yep. She did that. So, uh, superintendent. So uh, that should be in front of you as well. Um, this. Some of this information is, I, I quickly tried to update it as I ran out because, as you know, I try to make one superintendent report per month. Um, and this particular one started at the beginning of February. Um, but basically, you have a, the, as you know, we're in the middle of negotiations. Um, and I have for both Frontier and Union put together there, <coughs> or well, <coughs> stacked. Union 38, um, we, we are, we've had slow progress um, due to scheduling and due to some um, adjustments. What? I was looking for years. Do you want to talk about um, um, So, but uh, we should be you know, we're meeting next week, so we'll be moving right along again, as you can see it there. So, um, do you know why it's been so slow? Yes. So they had some changeover in their representation. Oh. Okay. Um, and so, um, and at first they changed over one group, and then they chose to change over another group. And then, so there was a there was a pause. We got we got ahead in, in one group and not the other group, and then they and then we um, so now you know we have a meeting next week and hopefully we'll get things back up to speed, um, which is good. Um, the school bus contract. I mean, when I originally wrote this, we had put it out, and but we've since received the bids, and you will get a copy at your next meeting of um, that and the contract. And so you'll get it ahead of time next month, and then we're going to vote it together on it at the joint meeting. So that because it is really a joint contract, so just two bids. It was just one bid. Oh, really? So yep, it was one bid, and um, and, and and came in um, came in very reasonable for the elementary schools, a little bit higher for the the uh, regional school, um, and I think the mentality on that was to I think uh, the company was really and it's Gripco was looking to work with the community, and since that we get reimbursement at the secondary level. And not as much at the elementary, um, and so nice. that's kind of where we're at. So we can, you know, we can talk a little bit about that. But he yeah. was, um, you know, that bid will be accepted, um, and is much lower than what our neighbors to the north are paying. So yeah. um, we're happy about that. Um, the rural aid. This has kind of gone around. I, I was going to talk more about it originally, but um, you guys, will, uh, you guys. Conway will not qualify for rural aid the way it's set up right now. Um, the, the community makes has too much money in it. Um, in fact, the only community of the four towns that are we would, rolling in dough that I don't know for no, some but no. the, the standard is Population also the only the only town home. that got any money was Sunderland and they got forty eight hundred dollars. So mm -hmm. so I kind of just jotted that down there. And so um, there's a lot of talk about changing that the way they're going after it. Um, you know, and this is only 1.5 million out of the nine. Well, you know, you'll get the square mileage, but you won't get the the need level. And so, um, so right now, I would not put a lot of optimistic in the the rural aid is going to help the town of Conway. Um, they're trying to. There's different models that are out there that they're playing with. The same thing they do with Chapter Seven. There's different models. Um, in some of them, in the new Chapter Seventy models, Conway does not look better in some of them. And some of them they're trying to do some more even distribution of money. Yeah. About, you know, and Judy can, if I say something wrong, just kick me. Mm -hmm. I'll right Did Waitley and Conway not get it because of the need criteria? Need. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, you didn't get it. Um, yeah. Deerfield obviously didn't, Waitley didn't. So Senator um, Hines said that the, the his formula got altered after it passed mm -hmm. the Senate and yep. in conference or whatever. Right. But the problem with it is that he gave a press release promising the town and the world mm -hmm. this is the amount you're mm -hmm. getting. Right. And then it yeah. didn't happen. Okay. Um, so don't issue press releases until the check's in the mail. Right. So. Right. So, um, That's in there. 
All right. Um, school choice. We're going to have to make a talk about that at the next school meeting. Um, I threw that on there because I have to have a letter from Desi. It's saying I better get that in. Okay. Um, so it'll be on the March meeting agenda um, to vote whether or not you want to continue to participate. It's pretty kind of a. I'm sure it'll be a short discussion. Um, and that the business manager position has been posted. We will be doing interviews this month, and that will be brought forward to the joint meeting. Um, right now, the way I'm trying to stack it um, is to have, um, as you know, the, the business manager position has to be interviewed by the, the final interview has to be done by the school committee, similar to um, Super. the superintendent. So I'm allowed to do the preliminary um, uh, Interview. interviews yeah. and right now I have I've asked Phil to, to join me I also have Ken Cutterback who's a former business manager to join me and I have um, uh, Sarah Mitchell helping out and um, Paula Light um, from the central office so that's kind of our, our little subcommittee to do the interviews and then bring forward the finalists to the committee at the joint meeting so the joint meeting will be a yet? what's that we got an application yes yet? we have applications and um, we through this month and we um, um, we'll be then going to the interview stage. The month of February is when we post it actually closes tomorrow, and then we will take what we have for applicants, and we have some applicants that are worth looking at, and we will be meeting with them next month. So again, I have to post those meetings, so it's one of those, it's a slow, um, yeah. bulky process. You know, uh, and so, yeah. And, and just in, in, on that, um, you know, I do have to, compliment Judy because it's, it's awkward when you talk about replacing somebody and mm -hmm. but Judy has really worked her tail yeah, off the last three weeks mm -hmm. um, and she came into a situation Looks where way we're better already, than it was yeah. she came into a situation <laughs> where we were way behind yeah. um, and had to put in um, endless hours um, she's been at the frontier I think every day the last last couple weeks um, and so um, looking way to better say than it was today's work product it shows the, the, the time that you put in yes it does and, and um, so and it is and, 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 we've, and the awkwardness of it but it is that kind of is what I've had with Judy the last two weeks is what I is what I do want permanently right you know what I mean I want to be able to walk next door day in and day out tell jokes and get work done right and so um, yeah. and it's, we've it's done a different that well. it's a yeah. we did, we've done that yeah, well and I, I just, you know, I just I wanted to throw that. Oh, um, it's, a, it's awkward when we sit next to each other. We're talking about this, but she's done really an incredible job mm -hmm. to get us caught up and get in a good spot. And I want to be business manager. Put in your application. That's what I said. Exactly. And the and you have to do a Conway's budget was probably the the smoothest of all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the other ones have been very difficult, and it was. Yeah. Uh, what you see of the budget, there are several tabs behind it that drive it, and. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge, I think, for me was just it was a lot of information available, but in a lot of different places. Yeah. So trying to pull it together. So now the budget workbook is all linked. Yeah. So a change in one place just plays itself out. But it does take a lot of grunt work to build that. Yeah. And, and it's, it's going to be cleaner moving forward because of that and because of now that we're in Infinite Visions and the principals have control within Infinite Visions to track mm -hmm. expenditures and, expect and, and track um, you know, you got to remember a couple of years back, the way it would work is um, you had to kind of hand know what you had out there for expenses. And so we didn't know what our ending balances were very accurately. And so there was always, that's why kind of you can remember the days of Patty, like, we should be fine. Right. And now we would, we'll know a lot. And there's always some things that are moving, but we'll know a lot more that, you know, um, the, what's out there, outstanding bills and um, what's encumbered. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of different things that are improving in that area. So that part's exciting. Too. So Great. thank you. Awesome. That's what I got. So a couple, um, a couple things. Okay. Um, for to, this Monday is the town caucus at eight o'clock at Town Hall. Uh, okay. So um, what, what we also know is that Cindy um, has announced that she is not running again. Yeah. So for the frontier regional elected representative, yeah. I'm looking right at you, Michael. Um, <laughs> no, um, no so, so, like so, I, it, I couldn't come home and tell my wife that. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's called uh, an opportunity. Yeah. Not a chore. Or <laughs> evening meetings. Well. Yeah. Same jokes. Like so we, so we, need, um, <laughs> we need some new blood entering our. Well, here Frontier is a hard place to enter without previous experience. Well, yeah, you have experience. Okay. Um, You're supposed to sell it. Yeah, so it'd be seven. It's, it's, it's seven more meetings in a year.
because you already the two of them are joint. You're already there. So. Yeah, we've had no additional meetings this year. Yeah. <laughs> no emergency meetings or anything. Do it, Ira. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't do both. Yeah. I couldn't do both. I could mm -hmm. do one. Mm -hmm. Now, Cindy is at large. Yeah, the, the t there's an elected representative, a three-year term uh -huh. at large okay. that's independent of right. the school. It's right. uh, of the grammar that's school. Not, is that what she is? That's or? what she has been uh, for. Gotcha. Okay. Years, yeah. years and years. It's going to be a huge loss because mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. she's not only a fantastic representative, but she knows the deal. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and she puts all the people in line. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is a skill. In the most positive way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you should think about it. Think about it. Well, we got to think quick because it's Monday. Has he yeah. nominated anyone yeah. herself as a successor? Both. I'm going to nominate both of you. I can say right now it's not something don't I can nominate. do. Don't nominate. I can't do both. both. If you don't go there, that's the risk you run. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, both? Can I answer? Yeah. Oh, well, you can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Vetoed. <laughs> this was no. going to be a one extra year because nobody came. There's no yeah, that's way. right. Your term is just eight. Your term is up. Yeah, it is. Up. Oh, so you could run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that something I would have to? Well, we would nominate you. You don't even go. I'll nominate you. Mm -hmm. I have to go. Um, all right, I will. Mm -hmm. Email good. Good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, the other position that's open just in case is is. Um, uh, town clerk. Uh, town clerk. And so you think about that too, because the people that you know or whatever. Cause I'm going to nominate. Germ Jeremy's retired. I have somebody to nominate. Okay. She's not rerunning? She's yeah, but it's oh, wow. 22 hours a week. Cool. It's 35 grand plus mm -hmm. pennies. Okay. Okay. You got All that? Right. That's a free, a free from our sponsors. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so it's, every, it's regular hours, right? <laughs> it's like certain mornings. Yeah, it's just like, like eight regular hours a week. It's not. Okay. Alright, um, we have no more reports because nobody goes to the collaborative anymore. Um, we have no need for executive session. No. no. We may want to do it at the next meeting. We'll probably have something to talk about. Okay. Right. So, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Yes. Um, thanks everybody.